architect Anjalendran did his architectural BSc in Sri Lanka and completed his postgraduate diploma and a research master's in special morphology at University College London. He practiced architecture off his mother's veranda, but did a dance as an apprentice for the Grand Master of Sri Lankan Contemporary Architecture, Architecture of Ribhava, for 10 years. Anjalendran's buildings are known across the Indian subcontinent for their simple directness, modern spirit, and acknowledgement of the rich vernacular traditions of Sri Lanka. Whether working with ample budgets or at rock bottom cost, his work focuses not only on creative buildings, but also their landscaping, furniture, and decoration. A monograph on his work titled Anjalendran, Architect of Sri Lanka by David Robinson has been published by Tuttle Publishing in the fall of 2009, which explores this rather uncommon vision. So kindly take the dais, and let's welcome him again with a big round of applause. Go ahead, Kameni. After half a day of doing nothing, he was trying to look for my philosophy, and I said, I had no philosophy, I have no concepts, and no theory in my office. When we are supposed to do some work, we do work. You know? and that, so it generally gives you a notion of um, how one approaches architecture, as opposed to perhaps the rest of the world. But it's a tradition, I would think, uh, in the which Jeffrey Bava, to, who actually taught me everything I know about architecture, also believed in. He never talked about architecture, he just did it. Okay? So my basic, uh, I start by showing this slide which shows builders at work in a little mural. Uh, and when I came back in 1977, when I was about 30 years old, uh, so, no, sorry, 26 years old, back to Sri Lanka after I finished my studies at University College London, I found that no one has recorded the contemporary or the traditional architecture of Sri Lanka. So uh, we had Barbara Sansoni and Ronald Lukoc who had put together a lot of collected 100 buildings and I helped to compile this book which was published in 1998. Um, now this is my ideal architecture. That is to say there is a little rest pavilion which is called an ambalama. It is perched on a boulder with four st small stone columns. You will find that there are stone columns. It relates amazingly to this paddy field, right? It's called the Karagahagedra Ambalama. It is easily, perhaps, my favorite building in Sri Lanka. It shows what small can be beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, this is not going to work. This is the uh, uh, rest pavilion. Uh, you can light a fire in the middle and cook. You can draw a, a sari around it and have privacy and you can sleep along the double columns. And it keeps the damp and the white hands away. And this is my ideal notion because it relates to the landscape. Next. And that is its relationship to the landscape. And I think that this is perfect architecture. Next. So this is a celestial water garden from a temple mural in the Dambula cave temples. Uh, so it's a water garden, but showing that from 2,300 years ago, uh, the Sri Lankans really believed in gardens and garden art. Next. So this is my favorite water garden. It's called Kaludia Pokuna. And if I like something, I actually record it. So this is, you come up on a, a pathway here. There's a stupa here. And there's a island pavilion which you ordain monks. It has to be surrounded by water and you get a lotus. This point also doesn't work. Uh, there's a lotus here and uh, what is amazing about this Sinhalese garden art, all the elements are in north, south, east, west direction. It's formal but asymmetrical and it incorporates the organic into the natural order of things. Next. So that's going up the garden path. Next. That's a real path. Next. That is the water garden. It is surrounded by mountains and reflects, so it's called black water pond, Kaludia Pokuna. Right? And you can see the lotus rock on the right hand side and the, the 
boat on the left hand side next so here you can see that the man made structure emphasizes the natural rocks and the monk makes the picture perfect so man is a also a part of the landscape next so these are the views of it next that is the library with a double platform meditative platform above next same picture next and you can see here how the man made rock links to the natural rock but the singalis did something special they often use metaphor so the water goes through that opening metaphorically not real right and that is a poetic part of the being a sri lankan next so this is again you can see how the water is supposed to go past and you walk up to the double platform next another view next and this is again medieval building but this is on the 3rd century the brahmi inscriptions on top ensure that is 3rd century the retaining wall is a cascade of stone and this is in a place called saserua rasvehara next and i started recording old buildings next so this is in um, degaldorua so damadenia which actually has two birds to lighten the roof so these illusions of how a roof becomes light and all is a part of the singalese tradition of good architecture these are medieval buildings next dorabavila right so this is me with my students going on major drawing tours next and uh, as i told you architecture in ireland was published in 1989 and this book was published in 2015 with my own major drawings and in singapore last year it was claimed to be the best illustrated book one of the best one of the best covers and it was also considered one of the best books but singaporeans don't give awards to anybody else but themselves yeah now what happened is is not that india doesn't have beautiful buildings india has fantastically spectacular buildings so whenever i can and whenever i am allowed to and i manage to find somebody who's this thing so i have managed to see most of the temples in the south and north i went and uh, gave a presentation in trichur and they gave me a car and a drive for two days and i saw all the southern temples then i presented my work in bangalore and hired a car and saw the northern temples so in this journey one of the things that really worried me was all the kerala temples were being ruined with neon lights the murals deteriorating right and plastic flowers appearing throughout the temple so there was this little tiny temple called the kandeshwar temple in Uh, Kerala, right? And we were wondering whether it was worth waiting for this because it will be also full of plastic flowers and neon lights. And they said, "No, sir. Why don't you wait? The priest will come in half an hour." Sure enough, we waited half an hour. The priest came in a motorbike, bare-bodied and wearing a vesti. But with him, he brought oil for the oil lamps, absolutely hand-woven, fresh water, uh, fresh flower gardens. and that is what it looked like it was a great spiritual experience for me where everything was intact and money hasn't yet ruined it okay and i think that is a lesson to learn for most of india next yeah next so this is my mentor jeffrey bawa i knew him very well and we never really spoke much about architecture but for him architecture never dominated architecture receded to accept life and to view nature and i now have a attitude in which i say that he first trained as a gardener so he doesn't do buildings he actually does gardens using building materials so gardens have vistas surprises a different way of, a progression of space and all his buildings do that and that is so in that sense he is a unique architect and it's his tradition that i probably follow in my own way i don't imitate him because i am me but it is lessons i have learned from him he never spoke about architecture so i am vocalizing what he never said and maybe wrongly so but he was a great man he also had his faults but it's from him that i learned uh, what i would consider my passion and i think that if you are not passionate about something then better give it up 
next. So I helped to do his first book called The White Book in 1986 and uh, it was not, though there was an RIB exhibition, it was not well recognized. It was celebrated throughout uh, Southeast Asia in Singapore. All officers had a copy of this book. It's no longer available. So the only Sri Lankan to participate in this was me. It's acknowledged. Next. And that is my office. It is just a veranda with two. Now I have six, five people working in it. Uh, it's folded every day. You know, it's not a major office, but I have my records very thing. In fact, from there's a new Singapore museum which came to ask whether I will give my archives to them. Next. That is my conference hall, which is my dining table. That's my engineer Deepal in the middle and Ranjit Bas, my favorite contractor who does 90% of my work. And this is the way, it is my studio house, home. Next, that's my vehicle, is upgraded by a Italian designer called Rico. That's my dog called Kalu and there's Muthukuma. Muthukuma has been my domestic for 23 years. The last series of thing is I've built him a house, which is just finished, he'll move in the end of the month, to show that a lot of the world does charity, but the main purpose in life is to empower people less fortunate. And I, that I believe in. Most of my work, I have only done one commercial project. Uh, I have mostly built for NGOs of, you know, like SOS Children's Villages. So it has never been money that has been the motive of my thing. And I must say from the time I started building his house, I've been financially made more viable. Next. So this is, I also taught architecture, 11 years in the design, first year design. But now I teach, for 35 years I teach history, now for two years. So the main is the contemporary architecture space and all. We go to see buildings, I control history, design, to show how we can all come back together with inflexible barriers, not every subject cut off from each other and hopefully the mind can put it together. Next. So this is the first project I'm going to share with you, it's done in 1992. And this is the SOS Children Village. This is a little shop house at the turn off to the village. Next. So this is the children's village. You will find that there's a road on the top left hand corner. There's an entrance building which now has a nursery, sorry, uh, a mother's thing, a little pharmacy a computer center and you have an access walking into the village of houses above and the kindergarten at the bottom uh, thing and a pavilion uh, outside for a toilet and a kitchen block. So it's a kindergarten but we can also use as a youth thing in the thing. Yeah. Upper button, okay. So this is where it doesn't work. Uh, okay. I don't know, some the maybe the light is too much. It just refuse to it becomes weak okay don't worry about it it's not important okay so uh, that is my village and I did work for SOS children's villages for 14 years and this uh, SOS has probably about 800 villages throughout the world but SOS itself very clearly confirms that it's probably the most beautiful village they ever have in the whole world next so this is the entrance, you can see that you can look at the vista of the pavilion. I've done a pavilion for every time you uh, change direction. So this is the entrance building, next. So that's the entrance building. Uh, that's the office on the right hand side. Uh, that's a mother's club. There's a little uh, uh, medical center, next. So this is the detail. I mean, it was done at the height of the southern insurgency, which meant I went to the site across dead bodies, burning on tires. And one then began to use color intensively to overcome whatever one saw. So this is uh, the seats are there built in. The seats have tiles, <coughs> which were bought for about two Indian rupees, because nobody bought things then. Next. That's SOS Children's Village. And the yellow tile is where, the yellow granite is where the granite meets the earth and is normally thrown away by the quarry. But it has to be used and, uh, with pest control against uh, large eaves, because otherwise it will deteriorate. The rafters are concrete because you get three foot, you can get four foot eaves. T with timber, you can only get three. And it's long lasting, it's self preservative. Next. 
So that is the walk. They didn't have money to do a link. So the trees become the link. Next. So this shows directions. One goes to the village, the other goes to the kindergarten. Next. That's uh, where the family houses are. It's on a plateau with a central court, central plaza. Next. So this is the family house. And SOS is very clear. If you build more than 1,500 square feet, 1,600 square feet, the mother can't maintain it. If it's less than 1,500 square feet, it's too small for the 10 children. So you get two bedrooms up, two bedrooms down. It's a double height space which everyone looks through. Uh, uh, one side is blank, so it allows privacy for the dining room court. So by drawing curtains, the house can have its own privacy. Next. So this is the sections. We normally, as tr following all Jeffrey Bava tradition, we do drawings after the building. Next. So that's a house. Next. That's again another view of a house. Next. That you, each house had one old column, one old door, and one old petagama, which is the old box. Next. That's the interior of the house. The, all we went is we went to a designer shop and said we don't want 54 inches of cloth. They're happy with 36, but put a design input. And the sponsors each did a flower and made a tree as a wall hanging for each house. Each house is painted differently. Simple thing. I think the difference between good architecture and bad architecture is good architecture. You spend a little more time. It's not more money, more time. Next. So these are details following an understanding of tradition. Next. There is a window box so the children can sleep on a window box, read a book, so on and so on. Next. That is the mother's outer kitchen so that dogs can't attack the spices. Next. That is going through the central plaza. There's the aunt's quarters and the guest quarters. The aunts are people who look after what the mother is. Let me just basically explain to you what a SOS village is. In the SOS village, normally, Herman Minor found so after the Second World War, oh, uh, orphans belong, had nowhere to go. They belonged to a building called an orphanage. But he also found that there were single women who had lost their fiancés or husband and abandoned children. So what he did was he put them together with the permission of the uh, single woman's parents. So the children also had aunts, uncles, grandparents and so on. And here, if the woman is not well, there's a, a series of aunts who take over their affairs for the day. So it's a very popular concept, uh, and I think SOS has about 800 villages throughout the world, and also, and funding is very simple, it's not top heavy. Most Germans give a shilling or a franc a month, and that sponsors all these projects, you know. Next. So this is again another view, looking at the vista. Next. So this is the plan of the arms, there are four, eight arms. Uh, there's a kitchen and upstairs is two guest rooms. Next. So this is what the plots are. The boulders were there. These photographs were taken in about 10 years ago. Next. So that's a senior co-work residence, a two-bedroom residence. Next. And that is what it looks like. Next. This is the plots early on. Next. That's the same plots with the boulders, same time. Next from the pavilion looking into the central court, next, central plaza. Plaza much later on, 2009, next. This is a roofscape, next. And from that pavilion coming down, next. And these are the, I told you, two Indian rupees you could buy them for, and it gives great joy, next. This is the, uh, Portuguese, Sinhalese Portuguese decorations, temporary decorations done out of coconut palm. I use that as a motif for the play frame. Next. So that's, those are the play frames. Next. This is the kindergartens. There's a Bowtree shrine in the middle. Bowtree is where the Buddha got his enlightenment. And the children tell their prayers each evening around the Bowtree. And if it rains, they go onto the veranda. Next. So that is the Bowtree Shrine. Next. That is another view. Next. Okay. Next. I'm going on with SOS. The SOS also does public buildings to integrate it into the society. And this is in Piliandala. I'm going to show you the youth village, which is on the left-hand side. Next. So this is the 
cast iron ore gate that's an axis you can see you can actually see the light at the first courtyard of the youth at the end the colors so this is done by Barbara Sansoni next so this is again that axis there's the outer pavilion next this is the outer pavilion creating a foreground for a background so as you walk through the building the foreground changes from left to right next so this is Barbara doing a color study we have a colorist you know no, most people show color as a very structured thing but she understands she has she has a weaving center called Barbara Sansoni fabrics and she uses it to understand color helped by this guy called Eitan and her understanding of color is unique but Eitan never used his color to show how color can be used positively in a building or anything else and I think her way of coloring is amazing next so this is the inauguration you can see that your I haven't put a column in the middle because it will block the view these are giant murals done by the art teacher who, who studied under a very famous artist with the youth next so this is the first courtyard in shades of red right and there's a yellow beam that ties everything together next and this is the rainbow room you can see that the main hall has shades from blue to green and the courtyards in red orange and yellow uh, variations all tied together with a yellow beam right and what it does is what you don't understand is that the direction you walk it changes your perceptions of whether the building shrinks or expands next you'll see it next time so in that direction on the right it expands in the left direction it shrinks so that is somebody who actually understands how to use color next so this is a shrine detail next that's the portals all concrete next that's again an old door and a window next next that's a mural next these are th done by a batik artist for the tabletops which are laminated for dining tabletops next and that I think what is that one is trying to find out I mean this is not the language is shown I mean we were in a 30 year we have had a 30 years of war two southern agency one ethnic war which lasts 30 years but if you go to any Buddhist monument throughout India it's very peaceful also Islamic not Hindu monuments so what one tries to do is within a boundary as you enter the buildings create a sense of tranquility and peace and I think that is what somebody thinks some, a great master like Jeffrey Bauer can achieve and in a more modest way I have tried to achieve though I don't know how but perhaps by trying to look at old buildings and old building complexes in a appropriate way next so this is uh, SOS then laid a condition to say we want you to do a farm project two conditions you can't charge number two the buildings have to be built by the youth so but in a stunning landscape called Malpota very green next next yeah so this is the site plan you'll get there's a magical tree in the middle the community building is on the top middle the entrance building is a, at the bottom there's a cow shed on its left on the top there is a director's quarters and the youth quarters on the right so it is it looks at this stunning landscape in, in the mountain range of Bandaravala next so you can see that that is that magical tree sometimes a tree can integrate all the buildings together next so this is I can draw like this I, I normally don't know how to draw so how does one do a very cheap uh, cow shed which is about 4,000 Indian rupees and make it look good so here is the solution next so you give the cow a window to look at the view right uh, so that's what you see and next and we get the youth to do a sunburst on the door next so that is the youth who painted the door right next so that's the tree you can see that the red columns frame this magical tree which ties all the buildings together next that is again an entrance view next that is on the veranda looking back across the tree next that is again the tree with framed by the columns next that is the kitchen open kitchen next and that, uh, there's a tree growing through a kitchen courtyard next that is the youth making their own 
vegetable plots next and that is what it looks like now next and that's another view they do water harvesting next so that is a piggery next so that's a pig how do you make it exciting by doing a weather vane next so the youth build their own little hut helped by the village director right next and they use earth with chemifix which is the binding agent and salt which is an antifungal agent five different colors of earth to paint their walls next so this is not about money it's about lack of money but how you can be creative I think you can only do magic in architecture if you are hard pressed and you don't have too much money to show it is money next so this is a factory I did in an awkward site for gem and jewelry they wanted a modest entrance which is on the left but the factory grows up it's a upward spiral next so that is an upward spiral the model explains it all next so that's an upward spiral the clients very clearly wanted a good workman building so uh, it is absolutely blank to the outside because it had a security structure but inside it works as a garden and that is what makes it a worker friendly building next so that is the entrance very modest next that is the entrance where you go next but yeah so that is the canteen at the bottom next so that picture captures the outward spiral so that's a factory but it's not a normal factory right it's done in an urban space but it is a garden and the outer the fire escape runs along the outer periphery which was allowed next so that's a part of the you can see this fire escape next view and the upstairs there's a recreational space next that's a factory next these are other views next next now this I was suddenly asked by a client in a 500 you all use feet or meters huh? both okay so this is uh, a 20 perch plot which is 500 square meters and there was a banyan tree and we were the client was very keen that we don't cut the banyan tree so you can see downstairs you enter looking at two other trees the garage is on one side there's a kitchen and pantry on top there's a living dining and we are 30 feet above the neighbors and there's a one bedroom on the ground floor next as you go up the tree grows through and there's a master bedroom on the at the right side there's another bedroom behind and a library and a guest toilet next and upstairs there's a little pavilion and an outer veranda looking at the banyan tree so we uh, generally in Sri Lanka uh, the worst thing to do is to use glass and you keep trees because they are equivalent to air conditioners the banyan tree is equivalent to about four air conditioners next so this is the section uh, next that is looking at it from the lower road the house next but that is what you see that little corner bit is all you see where the banyan tree has taken over the house though it was built afterwards next so that's the entrance next looking at the other two trees on site next this is looking down and looking at the trees growing from the lower side next that is the banyan tree growing over the terrace next so it's growing over the terrace next that is the view of the banyan tree next that's the dining room detail next the other tree growing through the roof next that's a banyan tree growing again next looking that's a master bedroom toilet next next that's looking at the banyan tree from the upper toilet first floor toilet next looking down at the pond with goldfish next the banyan tree growing up to the second tree I only cut two branches next this is from the upper terrace looking down and it's a captain who owns it and his grandchildren come and play Tarzan on these terraces next so that's a view up one of the dilemmas you have is when you have a three-story building how you avoid looking at other people's water tanks but you can borrow their trees next so that is a, a borrowed tree next next so that's I mean that comes from India next so 
another project which I absolutely like and his, the client has become very f this is called Mirissa Hills Mount Cinnamon Mirissa uh, hmm. okay uh, you will find that in the middle is a thing called Mount Cinnamon where I, it's on the hillock which has a lovely view it has views if you look up of mountains and it looks at the sunset on the left hand side in the middle is a museum and here you also have uh, uh, places for so the cinnamon peelers uh, the staff and also some sculptures and an additional swimming pool next so this is the sort of drawing I can do the story goes very simply uh, the clients co-partner in Sri Lanka, he was in charge of Ogilvy and Mather, an advertising company, rang me up and said, you know, uh, Mr. Miles Young, whom I didn't know anything about, is coming on Sunday morning, can you see him? I said, no, I go swimming with my friends and I put the phone down. So, uh, he had a fashion show of eight other architects the day before, and he was slightly disappointed with all the architects. Quite a lot of them are the well-known names in Sri Lanka. So, uh, his local colleague said, you know, there's an impossible guy called Anjali Indran. You are definitely, you know, you won't like him. Uh, and so on, but, you know, you may, do you really want to meet him? I don't recommend it. So, uh, but you must know that Miles Young comes from an advertising agency which deals with creative people and he knows the eccentricities of creative people. So, he said, well, I may be interested. So, in Sri Lanka, is a very small place. So he knew one of my other clients, whom was their client. Uh, so this is a sketch I did. You can see as you enter, I lowered the entrance area. As you enter, you saw the sunset. His suite is on top left. The guest suites are as you enter. There's a kitchen suite here, and there's a living dining place. Next. Next. Hello. That is, so this was a lower area, so I gave him a gallery at the bottom. So I could draw like this. So we went to the site, uh, meeting Jeffrey Bava, buying eight columns, buying four tables, and then he said in a strong English way, we will meet for drinks before dinner. So we went to the site and there was a brilliant sunset. So, so I said, uh, Miles, I do have some drawings for you and this is what I think you should build. So we went to the site that night and we went the next day where I set out the building and uh, on the way back I said Miles I've been rather rude I haven't asked what your requirements are he said don't worry about it just build what you want fantastic to have clients like that next <laughs> so this is as usual uh, in the Jeffrey Bava tradition drawings are done afterwards the only thing I added was a pavilion which a Chinese device so it changes from being in the right side to the left side as you walk down the front veranda next so that is the building on top of a hill. The pavilion anchors the building. Next. That's the entrance. Next. With very, as you can see, there's an entrance looking into a sea view. Next. And as you walk across, that is the view you get. So these are not buildings. These are just frames of views which makes life worth living. You know, it's not buildings in your face, which architecture is taught to be. It must be an object. It must show money is money. It must be in your face. These are buildings that disappear. They don't demand attention. Next. So that's another view. Next. The sculpture in the middle screening the living from the dining was done by Lucky Senanayaka. It's called the Enchanted Forest. Next. Because by this time, Jeffrey was dead and Lucky had no work. So we encouraged him. But everything was, every detail was sought out. The lamp. There was a Sri Lankan who had gone to Japan to learn pottery. He did the base. There was this Rico, uh, Italian designer who did the throats and we got the tops made separately. Next. So these are sculptures done by a German artist called Klaus. That's a place where we have breakfast every day. Next. That's the details of the sculptures. Next. That's the sunset which you see. Next. That's another view. Next. That's a sunset reflecting on the front veranda next these are sculptures done out, made out of disused car parts next 
that is of bottle tops this is used for in a cover of an art book in sri lanka next this is a soldier disappearing into the wall next this is malza's bedroom with druinka who studied got a first class at shantini ketran next these are the verandas because generally in monsoon countries you have to have a veranda to let the monsoon beat and but not beat into the room next so that's a view from the veranda the view you get next you sometimes get a peacock you may think that wild peacocks are generally normal in sri lanka but it's only available in these areas in sri lanka next that's a peacock next so this is the visitor center next Uh, which is going to be a cinnamon museum and we are working on it now there's a phoenix which builds its nest on cinnamon sticks and then and there's a new phoenix turning up next so that's a view in the night i designed the lamps to tie the building together they are based on the vesak lamps uh, used to celebrate the birth death and enlightenment of the buddha on the vesak poe day full moon night next so this is the visitor center and i had to do a pool next door because sometimes the house is rented out together to one family the rest had no pool next so you can see that it steps down and lot of people say is like being in the well not alhambra maybe heaven next so these are details of the pool next so that's a pool next next these are the difficult parts how you fit into a treacherous site but almost look as if it has always been there next 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 this is cinnamon pillars this got a world architecture award where the pillars work downstairs you must know that the cinnamon pillars are such a low caste other castes don't die and use the same toilet and stay in the same place so i thought better give them something better than the others so they live upstairs and work downstairs next So that's the cinnamon. It's done with laterite. Laterite is cut earth, right? But and industrial grills and so on to let ventilation go. Next, so you can see the cement grills, glass, laterite, and you. There are two houses. Next, so this is the cinnamon peelers. Cinnamon is a bark which is peeled, and then quills are done and left to dry. And cinnamon is I mean, there's a part of it in Kerala, but it's 90% unique to Sri Lanka. The, there's an inferior thing called cassia, which is happens in other parts of Asia. Next, so these are some of the details with old doors and windows as usual. Next, 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 next. Yeah, okay. Next, and I use these signatures of using mosaic. Each of them are 40 Indian cents. but it gives such great pleasure so i always believe that you can make magic with very little next next this is the agricultural workers what is the is a grand name for laborers houses they are one bedroom houses uh, but they all have a court where the mothers from the kitchen can look after each other next so that is the entrance to the laborers cottages next these are some of the views using old doors and windows next there's a view next there's a view from the kitchen the mothers control the children playing next that is a bedroom which has two built in beds so the mother and the children sleep inside the father and the adult boy sleep outside there's a cupboard and a table for a television or whatever next next uh the goddess of the cinnamon peelers is called patini which is a goddess called kannagi from south india and i followed a sri lankan tradition of making a shrine following jeffrey bawa next so that is the patini shrine so in the bend on the road one is a patini shrine the other is a sculpture designed by architectural students next so that's a patini shrine the goddess of the anklet next and this is a student on the left is the design we normally expect take the second year students give them lunch and miles gives them a competition so they did the one on the left and i developed it on the right next and that is we did a full scale mock up next next and that is the finished product okay so we worry about also lots of different different thing but you can also see 
for me the main purpose of architecture is to have a good time next so then you know everybody says you're in a comfort zone you'll never be able to do these things in place like a Pakistan dry dusty country so there was a guy in Pakistan called Amir Gauri who got up one morning and said he wanted to he had a 500 square meter plot he wanted to go and see four architects in Karachi so he went but he didn't get to see any architects uh, he, in three officers one he saw an architectural assistant one he saw a secretary one he saw an administrator so the first question they asked was how big is your plot you must know in Pakistan a house is 50,000 square feet okay nothing less in Sri Lanka we are very fortunate to have a law that says you can only build a house which is 3,000 square feet so Pakistan houses are about 10 times that size and is not considered vulgar because 95 percent of the gross national product is in the hands of a five percent of the population that is 95 percent are poor okay so this guy then went to one then they asked the second question is uh, one is how big is and how far where is it so he says Sakar, which is 800 kilometers north of Karachi so all of them refused so then he wrote and said sir I would like you to consider doing this you know and I said okay send me pictures of the site and this is what he sent me you know which nobody has asked. it has fantastic British period bridges next it is, this is the Indus he sent me the site is slap bang next to this Mughal pavilion and watchtower right and that is what the site oversees and for me I mean how do you refuse a project like that even if you didn't want I mean even if it weren't paid properly I said okay okay I will do it so I did I got a site plan drawn and I went with him with the model next so that is my client and there is a design team luckily they deleted the flow but I did an angle through which you can relate to the Mughal monuments okay there's a double screen that is to say that outside is a grill and inside is the windows and because it's a double screen the heat doesn't come into the building in fact for two years it managed without air conditioning and uh, uh, people were happy because particularly the ladies were happy and secure within the building next so that is the way the building relates to the pleasure pavilions you know I think that it has a very good, it's a contemporary building. And these tiles were bought to float on the floor. I said, rubbish, you put it on the walls. Next. Uh, so that is the plan. You can see I've cut the entrance diagonally. There's a water harvesting uh, basement. And the hot water, ho hot air goes through the double pavilion up into a pyramid on top. Next. So that, these are other views. Next. That's a double screen next next then I saw something was missing so I got a chandelier of copper birds origami birds next so this is the chandelier done by copper and steel whom I knew the designer next who, which ties up the whole complex together though it's a commercial complex next right this is to say that I love music if you understand Rag Yaman Kalyan you could understand me next uh, towards so what am I saying? I think architecture should not be dominant. It should be invisible, right? And that is what I've tried to do from that point onwards. Next. So this is a house which I was given on the west coast overlooking the sea, right? On the right side, that boundary is almost where the street line ends. Uh, in the left coast, it's where the uh, sea reservation lies so this is a house done for a doctor Kamal. none of my uh, clients except one is rich all the others are ordinary professionals because I don't believe architecture is the province of the rich alone next so that's the entrance it's a drawing next that is what it really looks like next that is as you enter right in a lovely generous veranda next and that is the kitchen next that is looking at it from up the screens cover the garages next and that is the view why do you need architecture you don't need architecture that is architecture for me how you frame the view okay but it also makes a I mean there are drug addicts but it also makes a complex secure at night next 
So this, this is my architecture. Next. That is the verandas again. Next to keep. Those are the general from which you can see the sea. Next. So that is your view from the upper veranda. Next. And that is you can see the building. It disappears between a church and a school. You can hardly notice it. Okay. Next. So this is another one done on a cinnamon plantation. So you enter and the service is at the bottom. And there's a pavilion at the top. It relates to the bigger landscape totally. Next. So that is upstairs with rooms with side views and looking at a pool. Next. And of course, even this I agreed to do because a peacock led me to the side. Next. That is the entrance. Granite steps. Next. And that is your view. Why do you need architecture? You don't need architecture. Next. So that's another view of the front edge. Next. Another. Next. That is me at a site visit. Next. That's the central court. Next. And then I was asked to do um, a toilet complex for a constituents. Because suddenly this um, a person from the opposition government went into the main government and from people who, eight people constituent who visited it, he had 800. So we had to suddenly increase the toilets and so on. And we did a little seat for them to sit and these are the toilets. Next. But look at their views. Each of them looked into a river and the mountains came behind. You know. So that is to say that you can do good architecture even at a very ordinary level, very cheap level. I mean he has a security entourage so it has also hot water. Next. And this is his house, the owner's house, who has become one of my close friends. So at the bottom you have a car park, and the house is on top with a uh, tree, court, tiny courtyard looking at a lovely landscape beyond. Right? Next. So this is the house. The, the, the drawings are pencil because I, the guy, he had Asperger's and he couldn't complete the drawings, but I'm now getting it completed. So that is the plan. It has only two bedrooms. One bedroom with his own court, the other bedroom on a terrace. And there's a seating veranda looking at the garden, seating veranda in front. Because if you're a politician, there are different categories of seats which the constituents come and use. Next. Next. Yeah, so that's a car park below. Next. Next. Yeah, so these are the views. That's the entrance. Next. That's as you come in. Next. So that's a shrine. The Buddha is at an angle because you have to face east. Next. So this is what the building looks like. Next. With acteria trees in the middle and granite floors. Next. 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 That's a living room. So this is done. I normally buy furniture and paintings with the client. I think that's an essential part of the service of an architect. Other they come and ruin the building. Next. And you have spent three hours doing three years doing it. Next. Sometimes I tell people, you know, you haven't cleaned your fan. You should go to another architect. You are wasting my time. Next. So these are part of his interior. Next. You can see the way the columns move. There are concrete, thin timber take columns. There are there is a Textural and variations. It is not monotonously modern. Next. Okay, next. That's his office. Okay. Uh, private office. Next. That's his bedroom on a terrace overlooking the sky and the mountains. Next. That's his toilet also overlooking the mountains below. Nobody, it's private though it's open. Next. That's again the shower from the toilet. Next. That's his guest bedroom with a courtyard. Next. And that's a guest toilet. And next. And this is in the outside veranda, a vehicle from a, a temple cart. Next. Then this is, I want to end up by showing you my domestic house. Um, Kumar has been with me for 23 years. He has served me very well. He's married to a lady called Savitri. And they are from the estate labor, right? But, and he's illiterate. But he knows more, uh, even though we don't talk, he knows more about me, subtly. And he can, at a, everyone says that if he answers the phone, he knows exactly who's talking. 
and he can if a car comes he knows whose car has come so this is my gift to him because he has served me for 23 years he came to me when i got the uh, his deeds done and he said sir are you putting life interest i said no kumar this is a gift and it's yours if you want to leave me and you go back and do other things you do that because i still trust people you must know that i have never signed a contract in my whole life and i think that that is the best assessment meaning there is nothing to sue me on because it is based on trust is i live in a completely dinosaur age i have no regrets i said i have now got into the modern age by having a smartphone for 2 weeks which has taken over my life next so this is it's a long there's a garage there's a living dining is a one bedroom annex on up and down i use the upper one as an thing next so these are next so that is the entrance right next that is the uh, god of shiva's second son skanda and there's a courtyard below next so that's from the courtyard looking at the garage next that's my dog this is the his annex next on all these paintings furniture and all provided which had collected over 2 years next that is kumar sitting there and this is his annex he'll probably move by the end of the month on the 26th next that is toilet next that is the garage next so you go up next and you come across this courtyard terrace next next this is my library right next and that's a living room next these are some of the details i bought one of these yesterday at <laughs> mutton road next uh, that's a wooden carving but bought in sri lanka next this is a thissarana singh of our foremost sculptors shivana bull next and this is the guest room right you can see that the painting on the right is done by a guy called nirmal vasan from batiklo is a story of how a father had taken 10 children to a church of this mary and the army shot them all okay so you must also know that while we do this there's also another reality but we try to go beyond it because i think that architecture can't be really tragic like this painting i mean you can't really read the story from the painting next that is the toilet for that is in that david robson who writes my biography next that's another view from the shower of the toilet looking at trees next and this is my bedroom that design i take from the kalamba museum get a batik artist to do it next and that's a line in the thing next right now i don't know whether we have enough time i can stop now but there is my first project if you are interested it was done for ashok and ainlal i can do it but i can stop at this point huh it will take 5 minutes okay so i was asked by ashok and ainlal who bought a very simple bare basic shell in moratua overlooking a lake beautiful lake but there was a awful barbara i friends and of course the monsoon beat in next so all i did was to extend the roof uh, and remove the barbed wire fence raise the soil so you could sit there and watch the fishermen fishing prawns at the end next so this is the house you'll see in the ground floor i made courtyards right as you enter from the right and that it sometimes the mud flows through and goes into the lake next and the upper floor uh, open and again you can you see i've extended the veranda and this is what it's about is many years afterwards i think i built this in 1982 1982 to it's 35 years old and this is what it looks like now i think it's one of the best projects i did because it doesn't look as if an architect was involved next so that's what it is next next a lot of the structure was there next but so this is the ground floor apartment looking at the lake next that staircase going up next yes ground floor looking into courtyards next 
that's a toilet cube little courtyard next next that is the veranda which allowed, allowed prevents a monsoon beating in next and that is the view you don't need architecture next next ne they're going up next 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 that's one of the bedrooms you can see I've turned the windows upside down because there was a lovely tree so you saw the tree better next so that is your view comfortable view and I think that is so there's sometimes I mean <laughs> yeah there was a joke about architecture I'll tell you later next 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 that's a kitchen a courtyard next and that is it and in the evening in dusk fishermen with flares the boats go by and I think that's hauntingly beautiful next so at the moment I'm doing a hundred hundred bed cancer hospital around a courtyard in its own independent size sponsored by a very very distant aunt of mine right and I think it will become reasonably controversial because in places like Sri Lanka people are not cured of cancer because we don't have radiotherapy treatment we have only chemotherapy which means you make their last days comfortable so in fact one ward is called the ward of hope that's why people eventually die right so next but so this is my main project at the present moment next and of course this is to show that a building I would like recorded but nobody has is Tipu Sultan's summer palace in Bangalore next 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 yeah and this is you should say my students attitude towards me but I have no objections thank you very much